Being an artist and a creative person in 2024 is not the easiest task. Artistry as a journey itself unfolds very gradually for most of us over a long period of time. Whether it's building skills, your own personal reputation, to developing the connections you need to truly succeed, it's going to require, of course, patience and perseverance. For all of us, it is a journey of ups and downs, both on a personal level and dealing with the industry itself. But I'm actually not here to talk about the industry today. I'm here to talk about us, the artists and creators. So whether you're a hobbyist or an aspiring professional, these are gonna be some tidbits for you. These are things that I do every day on the day-to-day. -day. They basically will help you build small, impactful habits that'll boost your creativity in a more long-term and sustainable way. Ultimately enhancing your fulfillment, your creativity, and your productivity. And by the way, I am Tyler Edlin. I've been a professional in the creative field now for close to 15 years, and I get this question from my students all the time. Things about like what office supplies should we use? How should we sit our desk? How do we hold and, and draw you know, perfectly with our hand. I'm gonna cover all these things today. So I'm gonna go over a few quick just office recommendations, things that I recommend you can buy, as well as these daily kind of habits that keep you healthy and keep you creating long-term. So number one on my list today is to tuck in your chin. No, not like this, but in, in a decent way, like imagine just sitting at your desk all day long, just kind of keeping it a little bit tucked in, right? So we don't, we're not like hunched over, right? You see the angle on my neck. We're not like hunched over, you know, just like playing Baldur's Gate 3 too long or, you know, drawing a picture too long. Like we, we want to maintain proper neck alignment because it's going to be good for all the muscles. It's going to help prevent fatigue and of course, soreness in the back as well. So overall, just keep your neck aligned with your chin tucked in to promote good health and posture through that. Now, this is one that I'm sure a lot of you are aware about. I'm not sure. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if any of you are guilty of this, but I would say get out of your chair, right? Like literally stop, <laughs> pull your chair over, get up, walk around, go out the door, go stretch, just get up once an hour. Do it for me. If, heck, if you don't do it for me, do it for yourself. Your body will thank you. I've got friends that have got blood clots in their legs that have had to have surgery to have their legs fixed because they sit too long. This is not good for anybody. Biologically speaking, humans are built to walk. We are built to move into work. That is not desk work, right? So you gotta keep the blood flowing. And because you're getting up once an hour, you're gonna boost your productivity because your energy levels will be a little bit higher as a result. This is again gonna reduce strain on the shoulders and the neck. And as a result, it's gonna prevent upper back pain. So of course, if you got a nice little chair like this, you can just kind of sit back. See, my arms are always straight, my, my hands where it needs to be. And this promotes relaxation and comfort during desk work. It's fantastic. Number four, next up, make sure your heels are touching the ground and your legs are at 90 degrees. Again, this is gonna maintain proper lower body alignment. It's gonna prevent lower back pain and discomfort, and it's going to improve your circulation in the leg and reduce the risk of varicose veins. So if you don't have the longest legs like me and it it kind of is like a little bit of a strain to have your feet perfectly on the ground. Use a riser. See under my desk, I keep one of these, keeps my feet firmly planted and maintain that 90 degree L-shaped bend in my knees. So for you shorter people, use whatever hacks you can come up with. Number five, even though I kind of technically mentioned that, is to keep your wrists straight with your forearm. So you just slide the arm up from your armrest and it runs perfectly straight. If you need a bit of a wrist guard, that's something too you can invest in. But right, see, look at this, no extra, like you don't wanna be painting like this or drawing and keyboarding with a bend in your wrist 
for a long period of time, that's gonna cause problems. Problems like carpal tunnel syndrome, it's gonna reduce your overall efficiency to create, especially if you're typing and using a mouse a lot. So those are my five health recommendations you can do if you're sitting at a desk for a long period of time, right? Get up once an hour, keep your arms and elbows at 90 degrees, keep your wrist straight, keep your legs, you know, your knees at 90 degrees, heels preferably on the floor, flat, of course, and tuck that chin. Now I'm just going to recommend a few accessories that I've had and used over the years. This is a non-sponsored video, by the way, of things that I personally believe will help the quality of your life. Because I used to get back pain, oh my God, all the time. I had a cheap office chair from Staples. I, it was like 200 bucks at the time. I was chronically in back pain from just sitting too long, you know, grinding out my fundamentals, drawing up and designing environments. It, it just hurt over time because that's all I unfortunately had the money for. Um, and it was just a crap office chair. I had to like add extra lumbar support and everything. It was a mess. So that's actually the first thing that I do recommend to pick up when you can afford it is to splurge on a good office chair chair and I recommend one of those ergonomic chairs I use a hefty one that I actually saw on Ergo Josh's videos the Herman Miller line and I got the Herman Miller in body about three years ago I have not felt a single pain in my back ever since I've got that chair he recommended I was super hesitant due to the price tag but honestly, investing in your spine is one of the smartest things you can do if you're gonna be a sit-down artist like myself. So on top of that, what we really gotta just do is find a good pelvic position, you know, for our chair. Of course, you don't want to, like too much swing. So having a good ergonomic chair, right, what you wanna do is find a good kind of pelvic position for yourself. You don't wanna lean like too far back where you're missing that support. You of course don't wanna be like so hunched over but right, just something kind of like nice in the middle. If the chair has built-in lumbar support like this one, you're all set. But if not, I do recommend buying some sort of cushion. And this is what I had to do with that last chair I had. I had to buy various apparatuses to help kind of correct it. They were never as good. So improving posture and spinal alignment is key if you don't want to walk around like the Hunchback of Notre Dame by the time you're 40. Whether you're going with the chair with the built one in or you're getting one with uh, an extra lumbar cushion, you just want to make sure the curvature of your back and spine are in as natural of a position as possible. Now, another thing I do recommend in terms of your monitors, your line of sight, and again, the angle of your neck is a monitor riser if you need one. You want to be looking directly at your screen. Straight forward out, that's ideal. I don't have to go like this. I don't have to go like this. I don't have to go like this. It just works. I use these monitor risers by Grovemade. They of course have much cheaper and alternative options, you know, that you can get almost anywhere, but it keeps my monitor at eye level. The other thing I do recommend to, to get, if you can afford it, if your space can accommodate that, is a height adjustable desk. Now, mine is basically a decommissioned adjustable desk. I used to do standing lectures. I used to stand all the time, but because of the configuration that I've, it's kind of evolved to, I've adjusted it at the perfect height for my chair, for my wrists, you know, for my body. I've locked it into a height, which you could do this. You could get any kind of desk, I suppose, and like put stuff underneath the, uh, under the legs if you needed a specific height and then well, I guess you're kind of stuck <laughs> if you have to make it shorter but a height adjustable desk is key again if preferably if you can adjust it so you can stand occasionally that's of course ideal I don't work long enough periods of time anymore that I have to just switch to standing but it would be ideal one desk that I've been using now for years is the autonomous desk uh, it's great really strong really durable has several levels of finish but yeah, if you're going to be standing at your desk, make sure you're using some sort of foot mat or a rug, something to ease the tension of, you just don't want to be barefoot on basically a hard surface floor for a long period of time. Your feet are going to cramp up and they're going to hurt a lot. 
Other things I'd mention would be like a wrist guard, right, for your keyboard and mouse to keep that support and your wrist straight. And of course, task lighting. I do YouTube, so I, of course I've got lights everywhere that are very flexible in terms of how bright, how dim. But to basically prevent eye strain, you just want to illuminate the entire room in, in various sort of ways so that you're not looking at a glaringly bright screen all the time. You know, whether you're getting LEDs, whether you're getting wall panel light, or just even overhead fixtures, right? There's a lot of variety out there. Amazon's got dozens. I like the Philips Hue light strips. That's what I'm using. Of course, every light panel ever now has got apps that connect to your phone. So you can, of course, very easily just change the mood and the feeling. Um, in the morning, I like brighter, more energizing lights. And as the evening or as the day goes on, I kind of dim them down a little bit as my eyes are more adjusted and I'm just kind of riding things out. Again, all these little things really do add up to keep, to make sure that every time you do sit down to get some work done, you're at your highest level of productivity and you can produce in a very sustainable way. That's the keyword. Like anybody can just sit down for eight hours bang some stuff out, but if you do that over time and you do it with ill proper form, but if you do that for a long time, of course you're gonna make an injury and you're gonna form bad habits. But yeah, I really haven't talked much about actually drawing itself, maybe that's a whole video, but if I were to give a quick tip just for today, that is again, minimize wrist usage. That means, you, you may have heard this from other professionals, draw with your elbow. So hard to do if you're working on a really small screen, but you wanna use all your pivot points basically from that elbow, if, especially too if it's on an arm armrest or you know it, it has support, and then you're just making your broader kind of strokes. Because if you're doing it with the wrist, remember you do this for a day, that's okay, but you do this for like a week, years, you're gonna get your wrist injuries, okay? And I've heard a lot of students that have had a lot of wrist energies because they're injuries because they're grinding it out using their wrist too much. But you guys will have to let me know below. Are you guilty of any of these things? Are some of these that you've never heard of before? I'd love to hear from you. So like most industries, the creative entertainment field, it's a pendulum. It's constantly swinging between good and bad, I know. It's been taking a lot of hits lately, but it's all the more reason that we can all sit up, right? we, can, we can create, we can grow together, and we can grind out our skills. Just make sure if you're going to continue to grind your skills out, to do so in a healthy manner so you can do it for longer. And, of course, be more productive and safe while you do it. But yeah, let me know what topics you guys would want to hear more about. I'd be happy to weigh in on that. I'll catch you guys next time. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know if you are a creator or an art student, over at Brush Sauce Academy, we have many options from you, ranging from the very cheap and affordable Patreon, which gets you access to over 300 video pieces of content and the exclusive Discord community. If you wanna get more serious and accelerate that, we also have group and one-on-one -on -one mentorships available. I personally hire industry-leading professionals to help you guys boost your career, and implement the skills that you need to thrive. Links below for everything.